Hey, welcome to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is the space to be for high vibe people looking to create a beautiful life and business. Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast, my beautiful friends. I'm Letitia Ringe, your coach, and today we are talking about conscious sex, five essential ingredients to improve your sex life. Now, we can't talk about romantic relationships without talking about sex. And the topic of sex and how to improve your sex life becomes even more important the longer you're with your partner. The reason for that is sex becomes a topic that can lead to breakups, to completing relationships. You might believe we're just not compatible or it's just not doing it for me anymore. And often that is less about you not being compatible and more about the level of consciousness you're bringing to your sexual relationship together. So this episode is going to give you five ingredients to help you bring that consciousness. And I want you to just really take into account how important this subject is. Sex is not just about pleasure. It's about connection. It's about intimacy. It's about being seen. It's about self-discovery, co-creation. We can use it for healing and embodiment, which means growth and evolution and self-discovery, yours and your partner's. There is so many benefits to an amazing sex life and that is available to you with every sexual interaction you have with your partner. And the way you get there is through the five essential ingredients we're going to talk about today. So first, let's talk about how to know you're approaching your sex life unconsciously. Well, the first thing is remember back to when we first spoke about conscious relationships. I defined a conscious relationship as one where in its shortest summary, you are bringing love and awareness, right? You're using the conscious part of your brain, i.e. your awareness to make intentions and move forward in a very specific way within your romantic relationship. We're also coming from love rather than fear. It's the same for sex. And if you find yourself thinking things like, let's just get this over with when it comes to sex or really focused on the end goal of sex being orgasm, uh, you're missing the point. And let me just say for those of you who are in heterosexual relationships and perhaps you're a female saying this or thinking this, let's just get it over with, which is very common. There are two things we can tell from this. One You're not having sex that is actually working for you. And two, even though you think you're doing something to gift your partner, it's not a gift and your partner can definitely feel that energy if you just want to get it over with. And that can actually be soul crushing for your partner. So what we want to do is get you both into a position where you're both enjoying your sex life and you're creating something that's unique to you and your partner, something that is a co-creation between you that becomes a way for both of you to connect and also discover more about yourself and also contribute to your own personal and as a relationship growth and evolution. Another way you know that you're approaching your sex life unconsciously is when you just think you should know how to have great sex. In fact, I was recently listening for the first time to an episode on Esther Perel's podcast, and she mentioned that one of the uh, biggest uh, misconceptions about sex is that people believe that it's just natural to know how to have great sex. And she was talking about the fact that that is further from the truth. And that really struck me. And I wanted to mention it here because I see this as well. Having a great sex life is, first of all, something that evolves. So it's going to look different at different points in your relationship with different partners at different stages of your life, and it will need to continue growing and evolving. That means the recipe for great sex is not always going to be the same, right? And you probably know this when you're stuck in a routine and you're thinking, well, that used to be amazing and now it's not. That's because it's always changing and it's not natural. It's about a lot about communication, a lot about communicating with yourself in a very intimate way and also with your partner. 
and being able to meet each other and yourself where you are at every step along the journey and also to give you the experience that you actually want to have in that moment. The way that we have sex can be tailored and different depending on the experience we want to create for ourselves and each other. And one more way I'll mention to know that you're approaching your sex life unconsciously is to have a look at where you get your sexual fulfillment fix from outside of your relationship. If you're looking at a rectangular square in front of you, whether it's your phone, computer, or a TV screen, and it's coming from a TV program or movie or from pornography, and that is where you get the bulk of your sexual fulfillment, or at least what you experience there in terms of sex life seems better than your actual sex life, that is a great indicator that your energy that could be spent on creating an amazing sex life for yourself in reality is actually being leaked into that screen in front of you. Now, the tendency is pornography for men and movies and and also TV shows too. And then for women, the tendency can is more story driven. So it tends to be TV programs like Bridget and Sex Life, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so you get this desire that's met through your TV screen or your or your computer or your phone rather than actually having that met through your relationship. So that can be a really great indicator that your sex life needs some TLC. Now, this episode's going to help you to make not only your own sex life better, but also your partner's sex life. And it's going to help you use sex not only for pleasure, but also for co-creation, for healing and embodiment of self-development principles that you might be working on personally. Yes, you can use sex for that too. And in fact, it's very powerful. So with all of that said, I'm going to share with you the five essential ingredients that I've narrowed my list of 32 down to, to support you all to improve your sex life today. Without further ado, let's dive in. Number one, bring intention to your sex life. You need to know why you're having sex and that intention could be different every time you actually have sex. Bringing intention requires you to be conscious about what it is you're about to create for yourself, what the experience is, why we're having this experience. This is how we create conscious sex. Now, bringing intention to sex by answering that question, why am I having sex here or why are we having sex here? allows you to answer that in a very personal way and also in a broader way to what your mind probably initially goes to. A lot of us are having sex for pleasure or maybe to make a baby or maybe to orgasm and that's about it. But you can also have sex for self-discovery, to learn more about yourself, to meet your edges, to surpass your edges. For instance, if a concept you're working on right now is surrender or it's confidence, you could be infusing your sex life with that intention. Today, I'm going to explore surrender. Today, I'm going to explore confidence. Today, I'm going to explore my masculine energy. Today, I'm going to explore my feminine energy. You can actually create very targeted sexual experiences for yourself and your partner that allow you to embody and work with concepts that you're exploring, probably mentally. You can also use sex for co-creation, for instance, using spontaneity. So you both come together with a shared intention, but then you allow yourselves to let your body take over, to let spontaneity take over and to leave your mind behind. For instance, there's a practice that I love called ecstatic dance or five rhythms, free movement, whatever you want to call it. There's lots of different versions. And the idea is it's a moving meditation. You can experience sex in the same way as a moving meditation. The idea is you let your body lead. You let the moment lead. You allow life the universe, whatever you want to call it, to come through you and to guide you rather than your mind being 
really self-aware of what's happening and then limiting you. So instead, you let go and you allow the experience, the moment, the body, your creativity together and that sense of spontaneity to take you somewhere that you didn't even know you needed to go. We can also use sex for healing. Sex is very, very powerful for healing because most of us hold some level of sexual shame within us that may have been passed down from generation to generation. Maybe it's from this life. Maybe it's from a past life. Maybe it's to do with your genitals. Maybe it's to do with your body. Maybe it's to do with just being seen. So the beautiful, vulnerable and intimate act of sex is an opportunity to transcend so many of those stories and a way to do it using the body using the mind and using the soul, bringing all three of these systems and sources of power together and working with all three in your sexual experiences. So bringing intention to sex allows you to ditch the, hey, I'm just having sex so that we can orgasm, which by the way, when you go in with that intention, very rarely does it lead to both parties experiencing the level of orgasm and pleasure that they actually desire. In fact, for a lot of people, going in with that intention can be the one thing that guarantees they don't actually meet it. So I do recommend that you play with having sex without the intention of orgasm and see how that helps you actually achieve that if that is something that you want to experience more of. The second essential ingredient for conscious and therefore great sex is to be holistic about it. You have a body, you have a mind, and you have a soul. And as we've spoken about so many times on this podcast, all three of these sources of power and systems within you require different ways of working with them. And the one that is mostly overlooked that has the biggest impact on your sexual experiences is your body. If your body is not being cared for in the way that it needs to be cared for, you will not be experiencing great sex. During sex, both of your bodies need to open, need to be relaxed. That is how you allow your mind to stop ruling the sexual experience and instead allow the present moment and allow your body to take over. In order to get to that place of surrender, really, it requires you to prepare the body so that it feels safe to do so. Let me share with you an analogy on this. So something that I've noticed through all of the massages I've had over the years, and I've had many massages, is that Many masseuses do not actually prepare your body for the massage. And so what happens for me and happens for many others is that your body tenses up before a massage rather than actually letting go. The reason for this is it doesn't feel safe. It doesn't know the stranger who's about to work on your body. And so it tenses up and then you have your therapist saying, just relax, just relax. And you're like, well, I can't relax. And you're mentally trying to tell yourself, relax, relax, relax relax and yet you can't. That's because your body requires different care. Your body needs to be prepared for the massage. So imagine having sex. It also needs to be prepared for sex in order to relax, to open, to ultimately surrender, to be present and not have your mind controlling everything. We need to prepare your body. And so it's very important to think about your sexual experiences as beginning way before they even actually officially start physically. Think about your life as a sexual experience. When you get intentional about the sexual experience you want to create with your partner, start that conversation way before you actually get together physically to have the sex. Talk about what you want to create together. Talk about the way you want to feel together and talk about how to prepare your bodies for that experience. 
talk about how to prepare yourself for that experience. How can I drop into my body? How can I get into a posture that makes me feel open, surrendered, relaxed? Make sure that when you finish your sexual experience together, that there is a very intentional close, a very intentional even aftercare to that experience. Aftercare is actually a concept that's commonly spoken about in the kink space. And kink is a very broad term. It encompasses lots of different things. The point of aftercare is that when people are having these experiences that they may not have had before or they're new to, and then they they close the experience after they've been so open with each other and they go out into regular life, there can be this transition phase where there doesn't feel like there's a proper closure. And so a lot of emotions can come up. Now, this can happen for non-kinky sex as well, right? And the reason for that is if we're opening, if we're letting go of our mind, if we're dropping fully into our bodies, if we're allowing ourselves to experience other realms and dimensions or emotions and whatever comes up through that sexual experience together, that is going to bring up some stuff that needs to be processed through your body too. And so having a proper aftercare experience to support the body and also support the mind is really, really important. Now, you also want to think about supporting your soul, your intuition through that experience. And so with that, quite simply, I would be working with the energy of love. How am I bringing love with me throughout this experience? No matter what flavor of sex you're actually happening, sometimes you're going to want to have sex that is more heart-based and other times you're going to want to have sex that's perhaps more root-based. And that's that both sex is beautiful and both can be paired with love, can have your intuition, your soul, that spiritual connection with you every step of the way. So it's not about what kind of sex you're having. It's about bringing all three, mind, body, and soul with you for the experience and being able to work with all three of these systems to make sure they're properly prepared for. And I'd say the body is the biggest boundary for a lot of people because it's completely overlooked. Number three, the third essential ingredient for conscious sex is communication. If you haven't listened to my episode about conscious communication, I definitely go back and listen to that. I'll link it in the show notes to this episode. I want you to think about great sex requiring great communication because you and your partner are not mind readers. You have to get really, really good at listening And in sex, a lot of it's going to be nonverbal. It's going to be through your body communication. And you've also got to get really, really great at allowing yourself to actually communicate and show what you like and what you don't. It doesn't need to be, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. It could be a sound that you make, a way that you move your body. And you both need to be looking at that. You need to be listening to each other, looking out for it, which requires presence. And you also need to be making sure that you're listening to yourself and then communicating that to your partner. This is what allows both of you to have sex as an exploration, as a container that allows both of you to learn something about each other and about yourselves. If you are listening to your body as your partner is pleasuring you or doing something to you and if a, if a boundary is crossed, you can communicate that with your body, right? And you can keep it in, in a safe space. If you like something and you didn't realize you like it, you can communicate that because you're feeling it. You're exploring those edges and then learning what's a yes and what's a no. And you're effectively communicating that. If you're all up in your head or you're all into just doing the routine thing that lacks consciousness and the present moment, then you're not going to be in your body. You're not going to be able to actually communicate. And a bigger piece of this is that a lot of us just aren't even being present with our partners. We're not noticing the subtle shifts in the way they sound, the way they move their body. 
And this lack of attention is what makes so many people not feel seen and heard within their sex life and their romantic relationship. So actually your sex together is really a microcosm of your greater relationship. If you're being ignored and not listened to sexually, then it's very likely first that you're both mirroring that to each other. And then secondly, that that's happening in the greater scheme of your relationship. So it's really, really important to look at where we're not communicating effectively. And is it because I'm not listening? Is it because I'm not being present with you and I'm not noticing these this communication that you're giving to me? Or is it because I'm not actually listening to myself and I'm not translating that, communicating that to you in a way that you will actually get and understand? It's likely a bit of both. Now, Great communication requires radical honesty and that requires vulnerability. Sex is a vulnerable act, but the benefits of allowing yourself to open up and be vulnerable with each other and be seen is huge. So also think about having tact when it comes to your delivery. The way that you deliver your communication with your partner needs to be done with intention. If they do something, you say, oh, stop that. That's terrible. Or you should know better. That is not going to empower your partner to keep going, to keep listening. So you've got to get really, really intentional with the way you also choose to communicate with each other. You need to empower one another. And also often edges will need to be crossed in order to find what your edges actually are. So learning how to communicate, how you actually go beyond those edges in a way that feels safe for both of you is really, really important. I would also look at just on that note, when we speak about edges, when I think about the edge, the the topic of kink and maybe sexual activity that is considered more taboo comes to mind. And I just want all of you to take a moment to realize that Under these categories of like taboo or kink, there are so many different pieces and things that you can explore. And so you might be into a piece of kink or a piece of something that's taboo and then not into everything else. Try not to categorize yourself, but be open to exploring with your partner and understanding how to communicate where something is too much with each other in a way that feels really safe for both of you. Now, the fourth essential ingredient to conscious sex is intimacy. Now, often we confuse sex with intimacy and just think that they're both interchangeable, but actually sex requires intimacy in order to have great sex. And sex is only one form of intimacy. I would look at intimacy in this way. Intimacy is all about allowing yourself to be seen, about allowing your partner to be seen and yourself, but really talking about yourself first. The level that you're able to be intimate with yourself will limit how intimate you're able to be with your partner. And that intimacy is all about allowing yourself to be seen. So if you're judging yourself, if you're not accepting yourself, if you're telling yourself that something that you desire uh, or something that you're experiencing as you're having sex is wrong or it like just judging it in any way rather than simply just being a really great communicator. This is what I'm experiencing and this is my reaction, etc. Or, hey, like, I really love it when you do this. Can you do more of that? Or something I really want to experience with you is this. If you're holding all of that back, you can never be seen in your sex life and in your relationship. So when you desire more intimacy, often the block is that the behavior you're participating in, which usually is a protective pattern from childhood, is what stops you from being seen. So you need to look at Am I allowing myself to be seen? What is my relationship with intimacy like when it comes to my own relationship with myself? Am I truly seeing and accepting myself? And then one step further, am I then allowing myself in that truth to be seen and communicated to with my partner? So we can't have great communication without great intimacy and we can't have great sex without great communication or great intimacy either. 
We can't have great intimacy without having a great relationship with our body, with our mind and our soul. And we can't have great intentions, which contribute to great sex, unless we have this great intimacy with ourselves. So it's all deeply connected. The fifth and final essential ingredient to great sex is polarity. I want you to think about this concept in this way. In order for someone to be seen, someone needs to see. In order for someone to surrender, Someone needs to hold the frame or the container in order for someone to be taken, to be ravished, to be penetrated, whatever the word is that you want. Someone needs to take, to ravish, to penetrate. So that is polarity. That is masculine and feminine energetic polarity. And polarity is essential within a sexual experience. So you want to ask yourself, what pole do I want to be on in this experience? And is the other person aware of that so that they can take the opposite pole to be able to hold or receive this particular experience that we're creating together? If you've got no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to polarity, I have two episodes on the subject, actually three, which I will link in the show notes to this episode so you can take that further. Sex and polarity are so intimately linked and with great reason. And all of us, regardless of our sexual identity and regardless of our sexual experience, are engaging in a level of polarity within our sexual experiences. And so when it comes to actually wanting to deepen relational polarity in the wider scheme of our relationship, we can actually use sex as a microcosm to explore polarity deeper and then take those concepts out into the rest of our relationship and into the rest of our life. Because yes, sex can be used as a way to further embody and heal concepts that we are working on. If you guys want to know more about this, I have so much I can teach you. So make sure you get in contact with me to let me know if that is something that you want to learn more about, because I would be very happy to do a private group container to discuss this. I'm just not going to go into a ton of detail on a public podcast, but I would be very happy to speak about this with you more privately in a small group container and also to be able to tailor that to the people who are actually in the container so that we can make it really, really supportive for you. Or all you need to do is head to latisharange.com forward slash coaching and we can work together one-to-one all on the topic of sex, because like we said, it really is a microcosm of your greater romantic life as a whole. And what an amazing way to work on the subject. So to close today's episode, the questions I have for you to ask yourself to implement what we've spoken about today are the following. Why am I having sex Answer that question for yourself. You could answer it before your next sexual experience or just answer it today. Like, why do I have sex? What are the reasons I have it for? Number two, do I prepare my body for sex? Number three, how do I communicate during sex? And how does my partner communicate during sex? Number four, am I comfortable being seen by my partner? Truly, please be honest in the way you answer this question. And number five, how can I play with polarity during sex? These questions will get you started on implementing the five ingredients that are essential to having conscious and therefore great sex. All right, my beautiful friends, I'll leave it here and see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and I appreciate you so much. If you would like support one-to-one as you up-level your life, business, or relationships in a conscious, intentional, and love-focused way, then head to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash coaching. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Goodbye.